Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Welcome back again to the Workplay TV channel. Doing a little review on my FJ. I've had this thing for about six months now, so by now, you know, I know all its little quirks, the things I, do, I like, dislike about it, you know, all that sort of stuff. 2007 tired FJ Cruiser. It has the four liter V6 motor. And uh, I think it has enough power. I think this thing actually has enough power. A lot of people say about the four liter that's in this and in the Forerunners that they don't really have enough power. But I think this thing has lots of power for what it needs to do. So, you know, we're gonna test that out here in a little bit. We're gonna take this thing for a little spin. We'll talk about that while we're driving. But we'll just give you an overlook of the thing. So like I said, 2007 FJ Cruiser. It was the first year they started making these things and they stopped making them in 2014. They basically looked the same. They changed a few things on the inside. The outside stayed exactly the same. I think it's an awesome looking rig. Like I really love the look of this thing. But the look is great, but it takes away from some of the sort of practical aspects of a vehicle. These things have some serious blind spots. Like right here, this huge pillar, you can't see anything out of there. So you rely on your mirrors. Well, the mirrors, look how small those mirrors are. But they're that small because these things are meant to get in tight places, meant for off-roading. And uh, I've used this to do, you know, site inspections and things. This is my, goes back to the camp with me. I throw my dogs in the back. It's perfect for what I bought it for. But it takes the right person to own one of these if you're gonna daily drive it. But I definitely could. I had this thing on like a 1100 mile road trip to New Brunswick when I was doing a bunch of site inspections and it's extremely comfortable. I made a couple adjustments to the seat. I find the driver's seat, even in the highest position, you're sitting down too low. So I took the seat out, put some spacers in, brought the seat up and now, now I'm extremely comfortable. But let's look at the outside. Um, definitely some things are different on this one than what you get from factory. So this has a three inch Fox lift. And to account for that lift, it has the Camberg upper control arms. These tires are basically a 33 inch tire. They're 28570 R17. So they're basically a 33 inch tire. Original wheels, I'm gonna do something about these wheels, but for now, this is what they are. Uh, looking around, I got a rack on top. I bought this about six months ago, like I said, everything that's on this was done to it when I bought it. It has a 9,500 pound Peterbilt winch in the front, just in case you do get hung up, which would take a lot in this thing, to be honest. Uh, yeah, so Fox shocks all the way around. It's got the skid plates, roof rack on top, and the winch. So looking around at the exterior, oh, it also has a Magnaflow exhaust. So just looking around at the rig, like I said, I really love the look of this thing. It's sporty. It gets you into some tight spots very, very easily. I had this in some snowstorms. I posted a video of going back my camp road with it, and it works, it works great. So looking at the inside, the way they got these doors geared up too, if you're on a hill, you can, you can, you can pull this and it locks in place and now it won't shut. So they geared these things up that you can basically take a hose and spray these things out. So here's the back, plastic, back of the seats are plastic. This is already quite a bit of room, but if you have large dogs like I do, you can fold these seats down and you have an enormous amount of room. I have 200 pound Great Pyrenees dogs and they love it back here. So you fold these seats down and you have an enormous amount of room. One dog can honestly lay here the other dog can lay back there, they have their own area. It's, it's incredible the amount of room. I've had my cousin, who is six foot one, and he's like 300 pounds, he was sitting in the back here, and he was actually extremely comfortable, he said. The roof is really high, so the head room is really, really, really good. They pulled the seat up just a little bit, and he had all kinds of room. So the door's open, kind of funky, kind of weird, but it works. So, the back cargo area, yeah, lots of room. This window actually opens, which is pretty cool. 
the subwoofer would be here that controls the audio when I bought it from the guy they um, someone had broke in and stole it basically just before like a month before he died, decided to sell the thing so the only speaker that I have that works is the speaker that's in the DVD player on the roof which is right there so right now the sound is not the best so I can't tell you about the sound quality in this thing so here's the driver's seat. It does have adjustable up and down, um, you know, backrest. Slide back and forth, of course. Cup holders in the door. Cup holders here. And you can take all these out and, you know, wash them. Or if you got bigger bottles, you can take this out and put a bigger bottle in. Each seat has its own armrest. Got a little storage cubby here. This is pretty neat. This is where I keep some receipts and stuff. So they got a storage compartment on top here. And your glove box, of course. So looking inside of the cab, you got your column shifter here, emergency brake, your actual manual transfer case is here for your four wheel drive, high and low. This does have a locking rear diff, an A-track, but it also has a no nanny switch, which is right here. So if I switch that on, then it automatically disables my trash control and ABS and all that stuff. It just shuts that right down. So you lock this thing in four four wheel drive, lock the rear diff, and honestly, it's it's taking you places. You're gonna have a hard time getting this thing stuck. But hey, there here's the interior. It honestly is quite comfortable. It really is. Uh, I did put this steering wheel cover on because the steering wheel was starting to get chewed up pretty bad. Sam, you'll be you'll be proud of me for that, buddy. As you can see, like I said, the mirrors. The mirrors don't do a whole lot for you. You got this little spot mirror, but once you get used to driving this thing, it, it it's pretty good. Like you don't really even notice how small the mirrors are. But as you look behind you, there's that huge blind spot right there. You do have good vision, fairly good vision out the back window, but the spare tire does sort of block that a bit as well. But yeah, that's a huge blind spot. But like I said, you get used to it and you just you just kind of know know how to do things. But that's it guys really for the outside and and for the interior sort of features it's it's a plain jane vehicle like these are made to be plain they're made to be off-road these seats are like water resistant um basically you can take a hose and hose this thing out if you wanted to it like i i haul my dogs around in here like i said there's a bit of dog hair right now but i've never had cloth seats that clean so easily like these cloth seats, you take a vacuum, a lot of seats, the hair gets like woven into the seat. These seats, man, you take the vacuum and it just takes it right off. So I'm, I'm really happy with that. We'll take a look at the payload for a second. This vehicle actually does have like 1,200 pounds of payload, which is pretty damn good, which is actually really good. I towed, I towed a 16 foot aluminum trailer with this and I had a boat, a boat on the back and took it back to the camp and it actually did really good. This this came with the with the not it's not factory it's a Kurt receiver that was on when I got it too. But anyway, guys, we're gonna go for a little drive. I'm gonna go on the highway, show you how it gets up to speed, how it handles, and uh, one site we're going to is pretty steep, so it'll get you an idea of, of how it handles that stuff. But I have not been able to get this thing stuck yet. I haven't done any crazy, 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 you know, off-roading and mud bogging and things like that, but uh, I've put it in some places where some other vehicles might struggle and this thing didn't. But if you get stuck, you got the winch on the front to pull yourself out. Uh, yeah, we got LED lights here too. Mention that. But anyway, let's go for a drive, fellas. Hey right, guys, let's get on the road. Okay, so, a little driving review here. Now that I have the seat adjusted, you know, height-wise to where I want it, I am extremely comfortable in this vehicle. When I first got it, and I know some other guys have commented on a video that I posted earlier and said, yeah, they find, they find the seating position very low, but I made those adjustments and now, like, it made a huge, huge, huge difference. Going around twisty turns and stuff, it's it's a light, small, short wheelbase, compact vehicle with the Fox shocks. Um, you know, it is a it is a soft suspension, 
so you do get a bit of body roll and you do get some brake dive there's no doubt about that but that's because of the shocks it's because of the fox shocks are meant to you know to be used off-road so when you do that you're going to compromise some sort of characteristics of how handling a vehicle you know can be of course it wouldn't be a video on my channel without a cup of Tim Hortons so like I said I had this I had this vehicle on like an 1100 mile trip up to New Brunswick and you know other vehicles I've been in well, on that long of road trips you get you get very uncomfortable I didn't get uncomfortable in this thing at all I was extremely comfortable the whole time whether I was you know driving like this slopes back cruising on the highway whatever it's comfortable it does catch some wind there is no doubt about that it's a high side vehicle it's got a basically a flat windshield virtually a flat windshield so if it's windy out, yeah, you do get some road noise and you, you do catch some wind. There's no doubt about that. But it's not that bad. It really isn't that bad. It's it's a lot worse than other vehicles out there, but it's but it's not that bad. The three window wipers are pretty funky. That's a little different. Some people people that see me and ask what vehicle this is actually, they're like, hey man, what the hell's with the three wipers? Yeah, well, that's what it is. Um, the one thing I gotta say about this vehicle, it has the best, by far the best air condition that I've ever seen in a vehicle. This thing is nuts. Like my dogs, basically, when I'm driving, if they're looking out the window, if they're watching, because they got the seats folded down, their heads are right where the camera is right now, and I point this towards them put that on full blast and their hair is just blowing and it's cold this is the best air condition I've ever seen in a vehicle by far doing maintenance to this thing is also quite easy I changed the oil last week and the oil filter is right up right up by the engine right up right up in the engine bay and you can easily just get in twist it off with your hand there's like a little like a little cap with a with a with a hole that comes off where the oil that comes with the filter will drain to. So you can set like a, an old soup can or something there and it, it catches the little oil that comes out of the filter. And that's it, you're done. Like it took me honestly 10 minutes to change the oil in this thing. It was it was the easiest oil change I've ever done in my life. We're gonna get on the highway here in a second. I am going to, you know, give it a little bit of juice to get up to speed. You can hear the exhaust because of the MagnaFlow exhaust. This vehicle would not usually be this noisy. I don't really care about the exhaust. It happened to be on it. I wouldn't care if it's there or not. It doesn't sound like a nice big V8 rumble, so that's the only time I really want an exhaust work done. That or on a diesel, a straight pipe coming up turbo. But anyway, we're gonna merge on the highway and uh, flip the cruise control on. I have not done the fuel mileage test on this yet, so I don't know what I'm getting for fuel mileage, but it's probably not the best, especially with the 33s on it. But let's get up to speed. Okay, I gotta let off because I'm, I'm over my speed. So yeah, it has adequate power. There's no doubt about it. It, it uh, it has a fair amount of torque. It gets up and goes pretty good. So yeah, I'm on the highway, cruising with the vehicles. It drives extremely nice. There's no shimmy, no shake in the steering wheel. It's, like I said, it, it, it's a comfortable ride. These things kind of get a bad name for, for not being you know a great daily vehicle I don't see why really especially once you get used to the mirrors you used to the blind spots this thing can definitely be your daily driver there's there's no problems whatsoever this was the perfect vehicle for me for what I wanted so I wanted a vehicle to take to you know sites like I'm doing today where the roads are grown in and I don't want to take one of my trucks I don't want to get one of my trucks all scratched up so with this thing 
I don't really care. Like, I bought it for that reason. It happens to be silver, so that helps because it hides the scratches a bit. But this thing is so small, so narrow, that it doesn't catch a lot of the limbs that the trucks would anyway. And also with, with you know, my camp, I needed a vehicle. I had the Tundra, the Tundra transmission went. I needed to replace it with a vehicle that could get back to the camp easily, could handle it, get in and out. Um, with the, and then with the dogs, like I said, this, this vehicle has more room for the dogs than any vehicle I've ever seen when you fold the seats in. The 4Runner that we bought, that would be great as well, but if I can use this instead of using the brand new 4Runner, then that's what I'm going to do. I'd rather, much rather use this than use the 4Runner. Now we're, we're cruising at about 70, I don't know, 71, 72 miles per hour and we're right at about 2,000 RPM. So yeah, I have not checked the fuel mileage test on this thing yet, but it's it's probably pretty close, a little bit worse than the 4Runner because of the tires on it and it's so flat and with the lift. But it gets decent, it gets decent mileage. It, it's not it's not bad. Uh, I think you can you can probably get like around uh, 250 250 miles to a tank. Be right around there would be my be my guess. Just for me, you know being on that road trip and how many times I had to fill up and stuff. You're right around 250 miles. But anyway, guys, that's it for right now. Um, as you can see, the thing drives great. It's comfortable. It is a bit noisy. There's no doubt about it. It's it's not as quiet as the new vehicles on the road. You know, the 4Runner, my trucks, and all that stuff. But it's not meant for that. It's This was built for off-roading, but it can also be your daily on-road vehicle. If you if you're someone who just wants to tackle a trail every once in a while on the weekends, but you want a vehicle that you can drive back and forth to work, this can definitely be the vehicle for you. There's no reason why. Guys, we're here. I did put it in four wheel drive, not for the vehicle, but this hill, this one section of road starting to get washed out and I just don't want to spin the tires and, and make it any worse. So we're in four wheel drive, simple, easy. Man, I would love to be in here. Like, I would love to own this property. These trees are massive. There are some huge hemlocks in here. Like, check this out. Straight up and down, like, the logs. The logs that those would make would be, oh, man, I would build my next host out of these logs, absolutely. But this is where this vehicle really shines. Uh, freaking seat belt. All right, look at the size of this stuff. Man, like it's huge. Oh, look at these logs. So nice, like straight. Damn, would I ever love to own this property. Anyway, this is where this vehicle really shines in situations like this. Here comes the road I'm talking about, the hill that's like, that's starting to get washed out. It's actually getting pretty bad. We've had some pretty crazy thunderstorms here the last, last week or so with this heat. You can see this road starting to wash out. problems no problems yeah the road's taking a bit of a beating is so far this year it's starting to get pretty bad but anyway with these shocks tuned the way they are it still keeps you a nice nice soft ride even though the wheelbase is so short and you know obviously the four-wheel drive system and another thing I forgot to mention about this thing is you got to get used to how sharp this thing turns. And it turns on an absolute dime. It's, it's awesome for getting into parking spots and stuff. It just takes a little while to get used to. Yeah, this road's getting pretty bad. I might have to do some work to this. She's soon going to be soon going to be washed out completely. 
Yeah, I can't get over the size of this, this these logs in here. There's huge hemlock, there's some huge pine, there's some huge maple. We got a sea, we got a ski hill right next to us where we are right now. Yeah, I'd have some fun in here. vehicle just loves this stuff I had the vehicle I had this I had this this on a uh, service road along the highway and it's all dirt obviously and I was just cruising like cruising hitting bumps you know hitting hitting ruts and stuff and the thing just floats along this is what it loves this is what it absolutely chews up I wouldn't have needed four wheel drive to get up here, but seeing the road the way it's the condition it's in right now, I'm glad I did because I would have uh, I would have been spinning a bit and I would have done more damage to the road than what's already done. That's not what this road needs right now, that's for sure. See this this is starting to get grown in. This is why why this vehicle's perfect. My truck would be hitting these bushes. And the FJ is a little bit, but my truck would be hard against the side of the bushes. And the FJ just it's nice and narrow, it just goes right through there. But we're here. We're here, we're here, we're here. I did want to show you how easy it is to change the oil on this thing. filter is right there you can just get your hand in there and turn it off as long as the last person didn't crank on it any tighter than what they should have and then like I said it's got this little pan and it's a little drain valve a little drain tube that comes down right there and you can set a soup can or something there and a little bit of oil comes out of the filter just drains right into it it was the easiest oil change I've ever done in my life and there is the four liter four liter v6 Hey guys, that's pretty much it. I gotta get in and get this done because I got flies buzzing around my head up here. But uh, you know, I guess the real question is would I buy it again? You know, that's sort of the biggest review with owners is if you could do it over again, would you? And in this case, yes I would. Like I told you, it takes the right person to buy one. You're gonna make some compromises. If you're someone who who wants you know extreme comfort and quiet this vehicle is not for you but if you're someone who has two dogs or has a large dog and you, and you need lots of room can get you to the camp on the weekend but you can drive to work fairly comfortable um, you know this vehicle is for you if you want to go serious off-roading this vehicle is for you so it all depends on what your situation is and, and what you're doing but for me it was perfect for a lot of people it'd be perfect, for some people it'd be the worst thing that you wanted. But for it, for now guys, that's it. Let's we'll see what the next six months brings. I'm gonna do a do a couple little things to this. Definitely need to do something with those wheels. The wheels look like trash. So we're gonna do something with those, put some new wheels on, plasti dip them. You know, we're gonna do something. Something's gonna change with those wheels. But other than that, she's pretty much geared up the way that I want it for right now. But anyway guys, as always, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please subscribe. Hit the like button if you liked the video. Stay tuned, lots more to come. See you next time, bye.